Hello and welcome to the Miss Rolling Podcast. As usual, my name is Jacob Satan, and as usual, I'm joined by JJ Armstrong. JJ, how the she rat devil are you? Well, what a day. What a day. Another day in the life of a forest fan. Eh? It's never, never dull as we find out our fate, which is a four points deduction. I'm feeling okay, actually, Jacob. How are you? Uh, I'm okay, mate. Uh, it's it's a it's a relief similar to that of when uh, Steve Cooper was finally axed. In that, it almost feels like we can stop talking about it and stop uh, thinking about it so much. Um, yeah, and we're going to prove that by spending the next half an hour to forty minutes talking about it. Well, you know, pending an appeal, it'll be nice to put some of it to bed. I think. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm with you. I'm with you. But before we before we before we uh, Two foot of tackle into the four point deduction. There was a short matter, the small matter, sorry, of um, Luton away at Kenilworth Road on Saturday. Uh, JJ, you watched the game. I listened to the game. Um, I think we're, we're going to be short and sweet with this because a lot of podcasts have already covered it off. Um, I think by and large, it was a decent. Uh, please note, I didn't say good, I didn't say anything better than decent. Uh, I think it was by and large a decent performance. We controlled it far better than I thought we would. Um, but as has been the tale as old as time this season, we do not defend set pieces, do we, JJ? No, my short and sweet take of the game is we were okay. okay. Some personnel in the starting 11 may be questionable. Brilliant goal from uh, Chris Wood with an excellent assist from Gibbs White. Uh, we looked okay in the second half again. We didn't take our chances throughout the game. We defended well until we changed shape and invited pressure, which I don't understand. And then, of course, we sort of had a bit of a gut punch conceding a set-piece goal again, which I think Philippe is at fault for. Uh, Sangare is not as bad as people made out. He wasn't brilliant, but he's not that bad, as people are saying. Um, I think he'll climatise. Tower being out is an absolute bleep. Uh, insert swear word here, uh, terrible. But my overall short but sweet summary is at least we didn't lose. It's a better point for us than it is for them. I, I, I coupled with the fact that we, I think we deserve to win. I think we were, I think we were by by far and away the better team. We just we couldn't score, which has been an issue now for a couple of weeks, maybe in months. And we defend, we concede from a set piece, which is been an issue all season long I saw I think I saw a stat that said we that 37% of our goals conceded have been from set pieces which is yeah I think I think it's 19 goals conceded from set pieces this season which we need to just stop that rot because it is bad that is a very very poor stat uh not good but that's the looting game it's done with on to bigger 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 news bigger things so JJ's gonna flash up a uh the bottom half of the uh, Premier League table, not even the bottom half, the bottom six. Um, as you can see, we've dropped in with that four-point deduction. Um, look at it, showcasing exactly how vital um, three points against Luton would have been. But, and this is what's nice about about finally having the deduction and knowing what it is right now if we don't appeal it. Is it very achievable to stay up, JJ? We have a much, much, much nicer running than Luton. Uh, we're still only four points off Everton. We're still only five points off Brentford. So we're, we're not cut adrift, which is what I think most people were worrying about if it had been more than four. Yeah, for those listening, I'll just read out the table. So in 20th place, Sheffield United, 14 points. Burnley in 19th, 17. Forest now dropped down with the points deduction to 18th with 21 points. Minus 16 goal difference could be important, by the way. Uh, yeah. 17th is Luton on 22 points, so one more point than Forest with a minus 18 goal difference. 16th is Everton, 25 points. I believe they're waiting to hear the outcome of their next charge. I might be wrong on that, Jacob. Let me know if that's not true. No, that is right. I get the feeling, based on what we got and knowing that apparently Everton's second charge does relate in some capacity to the first charge, so I get the feeling that because ours was, is theoretically quite light, they, I, I get the feeling they might get a fine, you know, for the second one. Interesting. Which, well, to round it off, 15th place, Brentford on 26, point, 26 points, but I feel like Brentford are in decline considering they've just lost to Burnley. Now, 
I feel very, I feel we'll go into our personal takes and how we feel about the situation very shortly. But looking at this table, I just feel a little bit relieved that it's not as bad as once thought because this, the picture and landscape of this is extremely survivable and we'll refine it in a bit more detail later on. But a better goal difference and only one point uh, below Luton who have two away games to Spurs and Arsenal whilst we have two home games to Palace and Fulham coming up. You know, we could be out of it as soon as our next game. Obviously, the way we've been, we've not exactly yeah. been pulling up yeah. any trees. You know, we understand those understand circumstances. That. Yes. But I feel relieved that, A, we understand where we're at because it's been... Um, it's been a theory amongst every Forest fan. Some people say 10 points, some people say 2 points, some people say 5, some people say 6 points. You know, nobody knew. And now we just finally know where we stand, or at least where we stand unless we appeal. So I do feel relieved. I think it's survivable. And my hot take at the minute, see if you agree with me, Jacob, is I don't think we're going to be uh, below any of these teams that are shown on screen. I think we're going to... Uh, jump up above Brentford at some point because they're in decline. I think we've got enough in us to get a good few points and I think we're going to finish ahead of Brentford, Luton, Burnley, Sheffield United, Everton, who knows, but the points deduction might allow us to do that as well. That's my hot take. How do you feel about it, Jacob? I, I like that hot take. Um, that's a, You're drinking from the uh, cup of positivity there, mate. I like it. Um, I don't necessarily disagree, if I'm being honest. We, it, it's that it's that view, isn't it? Now, like the worst thing that could happen has happened, and it ain't that bad. Um, Let's just don't say me, don't get it, me wrong. Is I, it is bad. It is bad. It's not that bad. Don't get me wrong. I still think we should appeal. Um, I'm hearing we're seeing rumors on me on Twitter that even if we appealed, the most we get back is an extra point. Christ knows. Right now, that would put us out of the relegation zone. So I think it's definitely worth appealing for, um, if possible. I, I'm still a bit surprised we got as many as because he was um, JJ is going to put the mitigating factors uh, on the screen with a bit of a readout in a second, but I, they're on the screen now for anyone for anyone watching. We'll, uh, for anyone we'll, watching. we'll read them out in a second, but this is just a quick glimpse of yeah. what they are. Um, given all of those, which I think Forrest have articulated there very very well, um, I'm still surprised that they decided to to make it as bad as they did. If that makes sense. So whilst I'm lucky yeah. for, I'm lucky. I feel lucky that it's only four. Part of me is still thinking, really. You what, know what we'll I mean? do is we'll, I'll play this mitigating circumstances video. It's it lasts about a minute, twelve seconds. Listen to it or skip it if you're not bothered, and we'll discuss those circumstances after and why Jacob feels that way. So just play it now. These are the mitigating factors for Forest's point deduction. Firstly, its unique position as the only club in the Premier League in the 22-23 season that was either not previously in the Premier League and therefore able to take advantage of the higher PSR thresholds or not newly promoted with the benefits of parachute payments. Secondly, it breached the PSR threshold because the sale of player A occurred a short period later than was necessary, which Forrest describes as a near miss or golden mitigation. Thirdly, the reason for the excess, namely that most of the excess loss was incurred due to the price of promotion to the Premier League, a reasonable reliance on the FY22 COVID ad back, and a reasonable but ultimately inaccurate estimation as to the merit award Forrest would receive. Fourthly, Forrest obtained no sporting advantage as a result of the breach. Fifthly, Forrest had a good prior record with respect of FFP rules. They admitted the breach at the first opportunity and had made further profitable player sales during the January 24 transfer window, therefore demonstrating a positive trend. Finally, Forrest had cooperated with the Premier League. So that was the mitigating factors, which I think are all extremely valid and well presented by the club. Jacob, do you feel then that, that, was, that our sanction is possibly too harsh based on those mitigating factors? Because I've got my own view on it, interested to hear yours. Yeah, I... I mean, first off, I love the term golden mitigations. Um, it is elite. Um, I would love to see some T-shirts for that on. Um, but I just think, you know, they're all really valid points, aren't they? Even the short and sweet last one of we cooperated with the Premier League, you know. We admitted it. We got our, you know, we got our taxes back on side. We admitted it. We've worked with them. 
Um, again, here on Twitter, the uh, Mr. M extremely uh, triggered by the uh, deduction. So I just I, th- I think the club's going to come out swinging on this because I think the club feel hard done by, and I, I do too. If I'm being honest, yeah. I'm going to go into more detail how I feel when we talk about our takes later on regarding feeling hard done by. However, I think it's a good chance to state that I don't think the rules are quite right at this point. Uh, particularly the, the first one, you know, the unique position we reference is the only club in the Premier League in that season that have not been in the Premier League. We've got 19 other clubs that have been established in the Premier League either for many years or in recent history and have had the benefit and advantage of parachute payments. Now, that, by having us have the same threshold or even a reduced threshold because one one of those seasons was in the championship, I just think is an unfair, imbalanced playing field. And that's where the the sort of shouts of it being hard to compete in the Premier League for newly promoted teams is accurate because how can you when you've got other clubs that are permitted to spend more because they've got the benefit of parachute payments being in the Prem and you're almost punished for success and not allowed to compete by finally achieving the dream goal. So I think the the factors we presented are, are extremely valid. I think they're true. And I think I think two points probably would have been fine. I don't know if a fine or two point three points. I just feel like just the four points just seems a bit odd to me. Uh, it was originally six points, may we say. But these mitigating factors that we just read out enabled us to have a minus two point deduction from the six points, so it was reduced to four points. So the charge was originally worse if it wasn't for those mitigating factors. I, I think I think a suspended sentence. So like a, it's three points, but they're suspended. And if you breach again, if you go a penny over, you'll get the three points, and you'll get the next breach on top. I think that would just. I think I think that would. That would curb the club more than you know. This 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 has quite clearly got backs up at the club, hasn't it? You know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, given yeah. the fact that we, you know, we breached it by thirty four point five million. My view is rules are rules, but there you go. But thirty four point five million was the breach. The player sale of player A, which is obviously Brennan Johnson, uh, was. Did it end up being forty five million or thereabouts, Jacob? Seven and a half, I think, wasn't so it? So the definitive point of this sanction is the sale of Brennan Johnson. And within the terms of these uh of, of these rule breaches, it said Atletico Madrid offered fifty million euros for Brennan. It was dismissed and counted with a sixty five million from Forrest. Uh Atletico Madrid never returned back for the player. I just think, why don't we just accept that? You know, maybe play circumstances came into account. Who knows? Brentford came in with 30 million. That would have still made us a breach. And also, Brennan Johnson wouldn't want to go to Brentford because who would? Uh, They came back with 35 million. Now, that would have allowed us to just about meet the required amount if it was before the, the deadline, which it was when the offer came in, I believe. So you're talking a few weeks, you're talking the sale of. Brennan Johnson for a higher fee than what Brentford offered to Tottenham. If they are that bothered about sustainability, then it's sustainable for a newly promoted club to make more money on a player sale, direct profit, academy player, player sale, than it would be to sell them for cheap to adhere to rules that they put in. Rules are rules. I don't think they're right. That's what I'm saying. So the threshold is 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 very much related to the sale of Brennan Johnson. So it feels like it's just, I can see the frustration because we were so close. If, say, Spurs came in just before the deadline with their price that they ended up selling for, we don't get a deduction. So we were very, very... Yeah, I think your point about the rules not being right is is already been proven, hasn't it? Because they've already voted them out, which I think should have been a seventh mitigating factor in that, you know, your rules are uh, horsemen, yeah. Yeah. I mean, as as we as for would have been voted out, and I and I get why we still have to be judged by them, but I still think that should be taken into account. Yeah, I mean, in regards to the mitigating factors, I didn't know fifthly was a word, by the way. Um, fifthly, yeah. Does it just go sixthly, seventhly, eighthly? I didn't know that was a I would, thing. I would have assumed so. Well, there you go. You learn something every day is a school day. 
Um, what we should have presented as well is uh, eighthly, we have cost ourselves points anyway by not hiring a set piece coach. And ninthly, <laughs> we employed Matt Turner, so cost ourselves some points there as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so speaking of the club fighting back, JJ, you're going to flash the club statement on screen. Now, this is super long. We don't have a voiceover. So uh, if you feel free to take a screenshot now. Um, yeah, please do check out the club website for the full statement if you haven't seen it. It's got lots of, I say positive, but I want to say lots of uh, fighting energy in it. Um, yeah, and there's one line here. Sorry, I'm just going to read out. Uh, After months of engagement with the Premier League and exceptional cooperation throughout, this was unexpected and has harmed the trust and confidence we had in the Premier League. Now, I think there is a a really a, a lot deeper underlying statement in that in that comment, which I think a lot of clubs are losing faith in the Premier League. Now, the Premier League have come on the defensive ever since to, to try to stop the Super League and things like that, and. I just I, I think we're at the tip of the iceberg of the end of the Premier League in some just this is a whole different topic for a whole different day, but I think we're at the, the, the tip of the iceberg for the end of the Premier League now. The lack of trust is evident through the fans as well. Like how many really? fans have you heard or read online recently saying how just fed up they are, myself included. Uh I just have no faith in the systems they've put in place for uh refereeing or VAR protecting the top six for the profit and sustainability rules, even as far back for the thing that we voted in last week in regards to the EFL uh, monetary situation, it just feels like football's losing its soul a bit. And they added the fact of the Super League, there's so many elements where the trust in the Premier League is at its lowest point, I think. You take into account the Man City charges, which Jacob will go off about soon. Um, but... I just feel I feel fed up with football in general at the minute. Feels like it's it's not quite where it was, or the beauty of, of it isn't quite there for me at the minute. Uh, and it's it's basically the Premier League and how the Premier League makes you feel. You're punished for competing or wanting to compete. So I can see why his trust and why the club's trust in the Premier League is diminished. Certainly, when you take into account that I think we've been cost quite a few points already by refereeing decisions and VAR. We've cost ourselves a few points, 100%. But the things that they put in place to allow us to be refereed uh, like and protected by correct refereeing decisions isn't fit for purpose either. So add that as another reason to why we probably shouldn't trust the Premier League. So yeah, I, I can see why the club have put this statement up. Uh, I think it is a very good statement, by the way. I think it's really strong. I think it's a bit of a, we're not just accepting this, even if we feel as a club we've maybe gotten away with it, we're still not happy about it. The change of the rules anyway, not fit for purpose. So, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think I made the comment a few weeks ago about, I think the most dangerous thing we could do with VAR is to stop talking about it when it's bad. I think this is a similar thing to that, is we can feel relieved that it's only four, we're not cut adrift. That doesn't change the fact that we, we can still think it's wrong. Although we've been harshly dealt by, um, yeah. But earlier on, JJ, as you are master of media in this enterprise, you put a you put a uh, <laughs> uh, a social media call out to all of our listeners to give us their thoughts and feelings on the deduction. Uh, we're going to read them out now because we've had so many. It's been awesome to see, hasn't it, JJ? It has. Uh, I wish we got this many where we have a positive. <laughs> thing happen <laughs> uh, but obviously it's a very important topic very strong feelings across the board to yeah. varying degree so I'm going to show them on the screen Jacob's going to read them out there's quite a lot to get through but I think it's important to get sort of the fans voice across the board before we give our take on it so yeah. we'll Have start with Twitter and then we'll move on to Instagram Jacob if you want to sort of you know go on on any point or ask me my opinion on it just let me know but what I'll do is I'll just continue to go through it unless you say otherwise let the mop flop, my mate. So this is on Twitter, at Nikolovsky. Uh, let's take it on the chin, move on and climb that table. We can treat this like a fresh start. Absolutely agree. I think that's that's what the club on the pitch should do, even if I don't agree with what it's what, what the club should do off the pitch. Uh, at WoodyWookie69, uh, roll up your sleeves. You have a job to do. Same sentiment. Absolutely. I think that's, that's what Nuno has to be telling the players. Ignore all that. 
the club will deal with that. It is what it is. You quote my second favourite forest forest manager ever. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's very sad that it is what it is. Reminds me more of Love Island than your second ever forest manager. Sad, very sad. I'm next. Sad more about you than it does me. <laughs> and next is David Joe, 25, 19, 76, 77. Uh, if we don't back ourselves to beat the promoted three from here, we don't deserve to stay up. However, it comes down to heart, passion, and not giving up. I see more of that in Luton than us, and Burnley have now uh, been given a leg up. Hope I'm wrong. Uh, I don't disagree with that. Apart from the game on Saturday, if that makes sense, I still think I still think we played pretty well and we deserve to win. Um, and I mean, let's not forget Sheffield United, Luton, and Burnley are bad. You know, if, we, if we're bad, then they're you know. They're they're badder, aren't they? I suppose because if it wasn't for the points deduction, they'd be blowers. So we've got every every chance of staying up. They are badder. Right, right through them, Jacob. We've got a lot to get through. Uh, at Gareth JD, I think we'll get uh, one to two back on appeal. That combined with a number of winnable games in the run in, I think we'll be fine. Yes, Gareth JD, the guy gets it. Uh, at Patrick one four zero six five seven might make the Greek wonder if this league and club is for him. Taking it away from personality seems a bit harsh. Minus two would have been sufficient. One hundred percent agree, and I would be very surprised if Mister M wasn't considering cutting his lots of shit. Uh, at over the giant tree, unhappy, but I'm hoping it kicks the squad up the arse. Yes. At Ian Islop or Ian Allstop, sorry, uh, Allstop. Uh, I'm middle of the road. I'm not happy we cheated, but I'm happy with the amount. We can overcome that. We are better than Luton. If we can't overcome a point deficit in nine games, then we don't deserve a place at the top of the table. Overall, I'm relieved and leaning towards okay with it. I think I think that is the overarching theme, isn't it? At HU's underscore 10, who is a uh, West Ham fan we've had on the podcast before, is Nick DeMarco the signing of the season? I, I would... I would Definitely say he has been as though that you know, like I said earlier, the worst thing has happened and it ain't that bad. Yeah, what a signing! What a transfer what window man. it has been. We need to get him a, a shirt on about that. <laughs> uh, Liam Gallagher Arch, uh, we've got to accept it and move on. I was nervous it could have been between six to ten, so four seems entirely recoverable. If we can't survive the relegation in the season where Sheffield, you Burnley, and Luton are as poor as they are, we can only look at ourselves, not others. That's absolutely true. We could definitely be completely and utterly away and out of this situation, laughing at teams like Brentford who have been dragged into the into the mire, couldn't we? Um, like you said, we know we've had well, we can't we you know we've conceded 19 set piece goals. Matt Turner, it's just a point on its own. VAR refereeing decisions and all that kind of thing. So we, we definitely should have taken care of this ourselves. Uh, Elroy, the artist, we can do this. Let's move on now. Got to deal with it on the pitch. That's that again. That's exactly what Nino needs to be telling the team. Liam is mammoths. A sense of inevitability. The other won't survive. I, I mean, I definitely, I definitely get that. It doesn't look good after a. You know, not not losing to Luton. If you want me to be completely and utterly glass half full, to now be going, Crikey O'Reilly were behind them. Um, but yeah, I, I'm still positive. But I, I, I mean, it, it's quite interesting actually. That's the first supremely negative comment. Uh, Michael NFFC Hobbs. Why haven't they dealt with Man City though? With over 115 breaches, effed up rules. Uh, that is because there are 114 more breaches dating back to 2009 and Manchester City dispute every single last one of them. Um, we accepted our single charge uh, and I think the rules had already been changed to deal with them quicker, JJ, if, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Because it's Man City one taking so long. Yeah, I just think the Man City thing, I just feel like you can't punish other clubs until you deal with the repeat offenders. If... I was in possession of an illegal substance and the police pulled me over. But in the car next to me, there's a bloke that's just murdered 115 people. You would hope that they'd say, hang on, I'll let you off because I need to deal with that bloke. He's just killed 115 people. In the grand scheme of things, that sets a precedent that you can offend, you can repeat offend, and you can get away with it. That's why I don't think the rules are fit for purpose. I understand what you're saying. There's a lot of them. But until you deal with that, I think it's unfair. And now, the longer it goes on, the worse it becomes and the messier it becomes, it's harder to police. But that's 
on that analogy, that's like saying that if you have one crime, until that one crime is completely and utterly solved, you can't solve any other crime. Solve both crimes then. So yeah, yeah. I think that's what they're doing. I, I think I've, I've said I think that this kind of action from the Premier League is the tip of the iceberg of the dissolution of the Premier League. I think those 115 breaches right there, and however that ends, is the bottom of the iceberg for the dissolution of the Premier League. Yeah, I mean that. That's whenever, where, whenever, wherever, whatever that song is, um, it's going to be. <laughs> that's going to be interesting. That's going to be very, very interesting. But well, I, I agree I, with you, Michael. I, I, I think one or two things will happen. I think if if the Premier League win and try and relegate City or, or do whatever they want to try and do to Manchester City, City will go, we don't want to be here anyway. We'll just start a Super League and other clubs will go. They will because there, there will be money. There's no. There are other clubs like Forest who are who will be racked off with the Premier League and if invited, do you think Mr. L would not take it at that point? Not saying it's right, not saying we should, but you know we don't own the club. Uh, or Manchester City win and any credibility the Premier League ever had goes and you know whatever happens from there the clubs have the power don't they I think the Premier League well, would pick, probably uh, possibly pick the wrong battle well I think this is why this point is very valid because it just showed that the rules are up as Michael says yeah I, I would caveat that as well with my personal opinion is that matters of money should never result in a in a in a pitch fine I'll say with points being the pitch fine you know they're, they're too they're too you know fine is more money whatever you know put put transfer embargoes on it that kind of thing but I don't think you can take points off a team that's just when you take into consideration Reading for example who's got an owner who does not care whatsoever he's almost waiting for the club to die he's trying to sell the club to uh the club's training ground to Wickham, I think, something like that. They're punishing the club and uh, mm. they're in danger of that club ended up in administration because the owner is doesn't doesn't care. So yeah. the point the club gets points deduction, they move down the leagues, they end up getting relegated, which means interested parties aren't interested in buying it, which means that the owner just ends up wanting it to die. So therefore the club goes into administration. Yeah. The club, who have been around for a lot longer than that owner, are being punished by the actions of a greedy rich man. And that's why I I do I do agree. I think it's unfair to sanction points for a club uh that could end up killing some clubs uh because of the actions of an owner. So yeah. I don't know what the answer is. I mean can you really punish a rich person with money? I don't yeah. think you can, particularly not in the circumstance of City. Uh but I just think it's unfair. Yeah, I, I mean, limiting squad size. I know they did that with Manchester City a few seasons ago in the Champions League. Some kind of transfer embargo, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Like I say, you can't punish rich people with money because they just don't, you know, they're just fun tokens, aren't they? That kind of thing. Um, but, you, you know, we're, we're, we're actually quite fortunate in the fact that we've got an owner that still wants us to do well because you look at Reading, they're being punished on the pitch with points deductions and they're being punished off the pitch because of the points production for a, deductions the owner now has nothing to do with them so they just yeah. lose every single which way aren't they and there's no sustainability in punishing clubs like that anyway that's a different yep. subject that's a reading yep. problem but there you uh, go rich wins 76 the big man is fuming apparently so i fully expect forest to appeal the decision i thought we would have got three points max i think we will stay up but we need but the but need the players to start putting chances away and defend crosses better for full so uh yeah completely agree um I. I mean, there may be a possibility that there's a low points deduction because they didn't want to give us one, but they can't be seen to be weak. So they need to appeal so they can give us less. I, you know what I mean? It's like there could be that kind of happenstance and jiggery pokery that needs to happen. But yeah, absolutely. Rich, rich wins 76. Uh, Marcus underscore Kane. I mean, I don't agree with the rules. They're clearly corrupt, but everyone knows the rules. And someone at Forest decided to risk breaking them. And here we are. Credit to the owner for investing in the squad and all that. But clearly the process has been managed abysmally. It's just maths at the end of the day. Absolutely, absolutely. And if we're led to believe what this is correct, it was Nick Randall's whole point for being at Forest, which that, amongst other reasons, is probably why he's still not at the club. Assumably, um, we don't know that for sure. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, you know, it's, it was somebody's. It was certainly somebody's job. So, uh, yeah, it should have been dealt with better. 
Franey28, uh, take it on the chin and crack on. The lads know what it is now. Uh, lads now know what it is. Nuno know, now knows, and I think it will help them. I, I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. If this doesn't help you, then what will? This Nuno is, now knows is a good little tongue twister in it. Nuno now knows. Uh, mod, mod underscore four underscore insta. It's certainly achievable. The team has to use this now as motivation. I thought it was fa- it was a fantastically well written reply from the club. Unfortunately, the only thing missing was not signing off with you corrupt bunch of bankers. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Put right. some more fire on the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. On the, and that uh, was it for the uh, for the comments. Uh, there's a lot more, but. I just there's too many would have been here forever so thank you very much for those that have got involved and if you haven't got them right out thank you still very much for replying uh, but there's an overwhelming uh, theme it's all the same sort of stuff here of we know we broke the rules should have been handled better we don't think the rules are right but this is survivable <laughs> yep yep I, I, I'm actually quite impressed with the level of positivity amongst it all I, I you know I, I basically couldn't disagree with essentially all of them in that, you know, we said there's, there's a there's certain thing that the team needs to do is to take the team needs to take it on the chin and use it as motivation, let the club deal with it in the background. Let's not bring those two things together right now. If, if the club can appeal it and get a point back, let's make it so that that just, that puts us into 15th or 14th at the end of the season. You know what I mean? Let's, let's take, let's make it mean something else. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, JJ, I, I think we're, I think we're, we're, it's, it's quite a relief knowing that it's done. It's quite a relief knowing it's only four and we're not cut adrift. Um, I still think it's too harsh, and I, I, I still hope we appeal. But the club really has to has to press on now. This this did this has to be, I don't know, it has to be some kind of Ted Lasso minus one. Minus four put on the board until we bring them all back against losing us. I, I, I don't know. We need to do something. Hashtag believe. Ted Lasso is he Graham's brother or something? Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Um, I, yeah, I'm. I'm actually very <laughs> impressed. That's what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> very much. Graham Lasso's brother, Ted. Um, I'm very impressed with the positivity uh, coming out from the Forest fan base. I've dreaded this day for a long time because I thought when this news breaks. It's not going to be a. It's not going to be a good day. So even for myself, I'm quite negative typically, and I've received the news and gone, "That's nah, all right," just because I thought it'd be a lot worse. And actually, it was because we still we have got another two points in my head. Three points is okay, survivable. Anything over that, I thought was putting us in trouble. But when you factor in the running, the games we've got versus it's basically a straight shootout between us and Luton at the minute, unless Everton get any more points. I think we've got more in us to overcome this deficit. Uh, and if we don't, there's only one point in it. So if we don't overcome this deficit, Luton get more points than us, then we're not down because of this points deduction, unless it's by a point, obviously, but we're down because we didn't deserve to be here. So at this point, it, I think whilst I'm not happy we've had any points deducted, I, I think obviously a better circumstances, no points deducted. Certainly not happy about it, but what I am is relieved because now we know, we know what challenge uh, awaits. I think there's been a lot of criticism aimed towards the fans and people saying amongst themselves, the fans just aren't bothered this year as much as they were. And I think there's multiple factors into that. Uh, we've mentioned already refereeing decisions, you know, things like that. But I also think the fact that we've had this dark cloud loom over us for so long and we don't know what to expect, we don't know what the narrative is going to be, we don't know what challenge we need to overcome, you get three points and then you think, well, this is just going to be taken away from us anyway. Or you get a draw and you think that's not a good result anymore. Previously, you'd look at it as an away point and think that's a really good result. But what you're actually looking at it now is going, that's not a good result because we're going to get points taken away from us. So I think this might energise the crowd again. I think the crowd now know, look, we were the 12th man last year. It's up to us to get this spark back. We know what we need to fight for. We're now in the relegation zone. The danger is real, even given your thoughts on Luton, whether they're going to pick up more points than us or not. At the minute, we're in danger. So we need to fight together. And I'm getting that sense of everyone as everyone's going, this isn't as bad as I thought. If we pull together here, we can, we can certainly survive. 
but it also requires a lot of effort from the players as well, which to some degree we haven't seen consistently over the course of this season. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I still think performances by and large are moving in the right direction. You know, that it's... I saw the other day about, you know, the points per game that, you know, took versus Steve Cooper. And again, if it was up to me, Steve Cooper would still be in charge. He's still um still the one on one. Um but I still I still see what Nuno is trying to do and has done on occasion. Um there are games which were a lot closer than I think a Steve Cooper style would have got. Um so, you know, if we went out now and beat Palace and Fulham at home, the next two games were five points clear of Luton, I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest. But also, I wouldn't be surprised if we lost those two and were seven points behind. Um, but I think that's a that's a segue into the next game being Palace at home, JJ. That is, I don't want to say must win, but that's must win, JJ. <laughs> that is a must win with capital M and a capital W. Yes. I think all our games are must win at the minute, given the circumstances. Um, the running, you know, our running, I think, looks better. But what better chance have you got after a points deduction than a home game with a revitalised crowd on your side against a team which is beatable, dependent on which Forest turns up? Where they can't be too much further away from us in the league either, can we? Because this, this could be a chance to drag another team into it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Whilst you're Googling. They're, they're four teams, so they're, they're three points ahead of Brentford. So if we were to win that, we go to 24 again. Uh, 20, 24, only five points off Palace. That's really start to drag them into it. Yeah. But yeah, I do think this is a must win, uh, certainly. I think all, all our games are a must win, really. Uh, as many as possible. Uh, I think we need to try and get as many points. I think... We need to try and get at least a point from every home game, if that makes sense. And I, you know, Crystal Palace is a must win. Fulham is a must win. Trying to get points against a team like City at home as well. You know, reaching us for that magic yeah. season. That's that's. You no, know, I'm not. I'm not going to be silly enough to suggest we can beat teams like that at home. But you know, look at Chelsea. Let's try and get amongst them again and, and, see, and see what we can see what we can do. The blanket statement doesn't quite work for that because not every game is a must win because obviously you've got City and Spurs. But you know what I mean. We need to approach each game as if to say, right, we need points here. Because we also don't know what Luton are going to do. They're going to treat every game as a must win. I didn't think it would run as close as this. It was running close even without the points deduction because they were only three points behind. Um, well, they're going to be in this in the same way. Their form's pretty bad. You know, the 3-0 up against Bournemouth that they end up losing 4-3, that's going to really hit them. I think they probably relieved they got a point against us but it's a worse point for them than it is for us so they're going to be fighting as well so it is a real battle so therefore it's got to be the same spirit as it was last season of with this run in we need to get firing and we need to pick up some points ASAP I, I really think we can do it yeah me too me too so thinking we could do it JJ what score do you think the Palace game will be it's not like Mario the Palace game will be I think uh I, you know, I don't care as long as it's a win. I, I I can't predict a score because at the minute with Forest, it's it's really difficult to predict because if we're firing, we know that we can score. But in the last few games, we seem to have struggled to really take our chances. Equally, I feel like we've defended relatively well apart from set pieces in recent weeks. You know, the Liverpool, Brighton and uh, Luton game, more point, far more points were up for grabs because we defended well apart from slipping up at one set piece. And that was the theme across each game. So it's hard to predict if we continue to defend well and limit set pieces and take our chances, you know, I really think we can comfortably beat Palace. However, you know, it entirely depends. All I'm bothered about is the fact that we win. Have you got a score prediction? Because I bottled it a little bit, but I just, I just want three <laughs> points. I don't care if it's 1-0, <laughs> if it's 7 I'm used to United to my pressure as well, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with 2 0. I think it'll be very similar to West Ham here. I think Palace are. I don't know how they're not in this battle. I think they've been crud all season, certainly the same level as us um, all season. They just seem to have always managed to keep us at arm's length. 
Um, but yeah, I, I think we'll, that's a 2 0 comfortable win like the West Ham game, like the Aston Villa game. I think. Yeah. And they made a managerial change for the person that I would have oh, preferred, uh, Oliver Glasnow. I'd have preferred him over Nuno on first impressions. I haven't kept up to date with their results, so I don't know if they've had a bounce or anything like that. They're more effective. I haven't seen them since they were under Roy. So that's another element why it's hard to predict any score. But yeah, I do, we just need to win. So hopefully the crowd is up for it and ready to help them over the line. They won. They beat, they beat Burnley 3 0. Uh, they've not won another game until well, the way back to the end of January they beat Sheffield United so I don't think they've had much of a bounce yeah well the, those two games are picking up points where they should which you know Luton Burnley Luton again we failed to pick up points in those games where it counts so this is why the running is really important for us again because uh, we've got games against Everton Burnley Sheffield United that we really need to capitalise on Christ, that, that Sheffield United away game. Good Lord. Oh, yeah. Love a ticket. They will already be relegated by that point. So, why am I predicting that they're going to beat us? But these are, these are good games to get points in. There's some good games that you can get some points and just help us over the line, I think. Absolutely. So, then, JJ, so you've answered sort of that you think will beat Palace at home, or that you hope and beg and wish and pray. Uh, the last question before we do the outro this week is will we stay up and I want a one word answer it doesn't have to be yes or no but a one word answer absolutely oh. Oh. Uh, my answer to the same question is positive what I'm positive for stay up oh also my positive. god <laughs> <laughs> pathetic <laughs> If you listen for the first time, um, apologies for that. Um, but thank you for making it through. And if you come back again and again and again and again and again and again and again, God knows we love you. You read. <laughs>